In my video for example one, we saw an instance where we had samples from two different groups completely unrelated. In this example, you'll see how to deal with dependent or paired samples where the samples are related in some way. Usually you have the same measurement on one particular uh, individual unit or person, and other times they might be uh, two things that were related for some other reason, but most often it's going to be one thing measured twice. So in other words, one employee here measured twice one object measured twice. And so how would I recognize that in general and what kind of test should we use? Well, let's take a look at this example to understand that. We're told a manufacturing company is testing some kind of new production management system and it's supposed to increase average worker output. We have data here for production output before and after the new system. So as soon as I see before and after data and then I look at the data and I see, okay, we measured employee one twice, once on the old system and again on the new system, it starts telling me, okay, we're looking at paired sampling here. And then I say the question that we're asking is about average worker output. And so I say, okay, we're testing dependent samples. They're paired up and we're talking about an average. So this is going to be a dependent samples t-test. And so when I look at a dependent samples t-test, what we're going to actually do is create a new group of data. And we're going to do that by combining, actually finding the difference between each of these values. And before I go into that, some people might say, why would you do a study this way? But if you think about it, when you measure the same employee twice, you take out one variable that's of concern. And that's the variable of typical worker output. In other words, some employees are going to be better than others naturally. We don't want that influencing our data here. We want to be able to say any improvement we see isn't because it happened to have a lot of uh, good employees in one group and a lot of bad employees in another, but instead because of the system. So we remove that variable of individual employee uh, differences by saying, okay, same employee measured twice. And so that gives me the paired sampling. With a dependent samples t-test, we're going to find the differences. And we can actually do this within the calculator. So before we get to that, let's talk about what H0 and HA would look like. With H0 and HA, I need to be careful about which group I'm choosing to be the first group and which is the second group. So in this case, obviously, I'm just going to go in order. This is one, this is two. We can think of this like before, so that's the old system. And we can think of this as after, and that's the new system. And so what I could do here is say, okay, is there evidence the new system has increased output? So what I'm actually asking is, when I compare before and after, is after bigger, right? So is group two bigger? Is two bigger than one? And so what I need to do is represent that here is the mean for one less than the mean for two. But because I deal with uh, dependent samples, I'm actually going to talk about mu d. Now mu d is a little bit uh, different. It's the average mean difference for the population. So it's if you took group one, subtracted group two, and then you would be left here with the differences. What's the average of those? And so it's going to follow the same pattern as this. Once you decide group one's less than group two, you're saying mu sub d is less than zero. That may confuse you because it says has increased. But if it's increased and this is bigger, then when I take the differences, I should have negative numbers, which is why it comes out this way. I usually don't think about that. I usually focus on this right here. And I say, okay, is one less than two? Or is one bigger than two? And then that translate directly, translates directly into HA. Okay, and that's versus mu sub d greater than or equal to zero. All right, so what we'll do first is we'll approach this using uh, the rejection region method. And so if I was to do that, I'm still going to calculate my test statistic and everything, but I'm going to use the calculator to help. And that's really important with this type of problem. You don't want to be doing these calculations by hand. So what I need to do is I need to get all the differences together. So I'm going to go into stat and edit. That's my list. And I'm going to type all of group one into list one. So 49, 45, etc. The order doesn't matter, but once I pick an order, I got to stick with it because these are paired up. So I'm going to go exactly as I see here. And then what I'm going to do is take all of group two and put it into list two. Now order matters because I kept the same order in the first group. These are paired up. We don't want to mix up employee two with employee one. So I want to make sure to stick to what I did before. Now what I'm going to do is go over to list three and I'm going to actually highlight the very top. So this is a lot like a spreadsheet. I can tell L3 to do a calculation for me. 
what I'm going to do is tell it to subtract L1 from L2. So that does that before and after because the statistic we're interested in is going to be D bar. And so D bar is the average, that's our sample average of these differences, and it comes from taking the difference of 1 minus 2, 1 minus 2, etc., and finding the average. And so what I'm going to do is say do L1, which is second and 1, minus L2, which is second and 2. When I press enter, it automatically fills up with all my differences. Now, if that doesn't happen to you, then the problem is actually that you probably didn't highlight L3 first. Once I do this, I actually want to do, now we're treating this like its own data set, so I want to do a t-test just on this value. So on L3 by itself. So I go to stat now, and I go to test, and I go to a regular t-test, so that's number two. Now I need to tell it that I'm using data, so I'm going to highlight data and press enter. And mu not coming from our uh, HA and H not is zero. But it automatically is set to, to list one. What I want to do is tell it uh, list two, and you see how it's flashing A? I need to press alpha to make it quit doing that, and then go to second and three to tell L3. You should only have to do this once, and usually from now on when you highlight data, it will say L3. Frequency you want to leave as one. This is a left tail test, and now I can finally calculate. Okay, so if I'm doing the rejection region method, what I need is a test statistic. This is the same test statistic that you would get if you were to do this by hand, and so I get a test statistic of minus 2.499. Okay, now what am I going to compare this to? I need a rejection region. So I'm going to draw a t distribution and say, okay, mean is zero. And this is a left tail test, so I'm going to put alpha over here to the left. There's my 0.01. And so this is going to be a negative t that I'm going to get from the uh, table. And now how many degrees of freedom do I use? Degrees of freedom is going to be the total number of pairs you have. So we have 12 pairs minus one. So this will be 11 degrees of freedom. So I want to look at uh, one tail and then 0 0.01 in the table and degrees of freedom 11. So I end up with a value of negative 2.7181. And as you can see here, my t-test statistic doesn't quite make it. Um, if I was to look at where this is on the graph, it's maybe right about here, so it's not quite in the rejection region, so this would be a fail to reject H0. So if I fail to reject H0, I can say, I, all I can really say is no, there is no evidence the new system has increased output. So again, you can calculate uh, the degrees of freedom we did by hand, right? But you can calculate the test statistic by hand, but it's going to require quite a bit of calculation because you'll have to find each of the differences. You must know how to do this in the calculator. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult for you. Now, notice, by the way, how close our test statistic was to t. That should be reflected in the p-value method, too. So let's take a look if we do this with the p-value method. So with the p-value method, our h naught and ha stays exactly the same. Remember, it was the mean difference is less than zero. We're, in other words, we're saying that we've increased, that the new system is bigger, versus the mean difference is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, from my same calculator output, I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to look. We have a p-value of 0 0.01, let's say, 5. Notice, just like with our test statistic, this is just barely bigger than alpha. So once again, I end up failing to reject H0, and this has the same conclusion as before. It's always a good idea. You want to know how to do both of these methods, but you should come up with the same answer. And so I was going to say, it's always a good idea to try both methods. So once again, there is no evidence the new system has increased output. So in both cases, uh, we came very close to rejecting H0. We didn't quite, and it shows you the power of alpha. If alpha was, for example, 0.05, we'd have a totally different conclusion. And so that's why there's a lot of talk out there. If you were to Google this, you would learn that a lot of people are bothered by such a stringent uh, requirement that alpha sets. But that doesn't mean that it's not used. Basically, everybody still just uses alpha. But it shows you that when you have slight things like this where it's right on the edge, does it make sense as a business decision to say, okay, no, we're not going to use this new system? Or because it was so close to being statistically significant, should you look at it closer? And you can see that's a tough question to answer in applied problems. 
So with these, once again, make sure you know how to use the calculator for this. Make sure you know how to do the test, uh, the rejection region method and the test with the p-value method. Both things can come straight from your calculator.